Hey, everybody. Welcome to another question and answer. It's been a very busy week on YouTube. And has the Facebook been as busy as YouTube, Patrick? Are you there? Very busy. And um, the class is live. Mentioned that, that phase two is up. Phase two of the French Satie. I noticed the nice introduction that you have on that, Patrick. Did you see it? Jim, yeah, no, starring didn't. Jimmy. He's in France. He's the video. I don't, how did he go to France? When did he have time to do that? I don't know. I mean, he's a man about town. And he's got some nice... And you don't even get to go around. You know, how, how far is the, the shop to the house? I think he maybe went to Little France somewhere in a, yeah, locally. Yeah. You know, like some... France, uh, where, where, Montana. <laughs> <laughs> France, Montana. <laughs> That's too, uh, what do they call that, an oxymoron? <laughs> well, there's, there's places around. It's like, you know. Well, there's little China and there's little Brazil or whatever, but I don't think I've ever heard of a little France in this country. Well, I'm sure there's probably some way you're going to start getting that, that Facebook. That, oh, uh, yeah, people will, will let me know. Speaking of mistakes and misinterpretations, I have to say. My mother said it was not a mistake. <laughs> A misinterpretation, maybe? Oh, well, okay, all right, all right. Bad timing? Okay, all right. Well, I, I, we used to tease. We had a segment uh, that we took down because it started getting a little old. You know, I don't know if you guys remember the coconut the coconut fiber serving yes, up, Jimmy. Yes, so, so we're coming up with something new now? Uh, are you coming up with something new, Patrick, for an intro? Well, we didn't film it before, so I'll have to... Do that maybe in a few months. But we took Jimmy's down because I, th I I thought I was getting a little old, and and I had a little joke about this old fifties music song, and I thought it went something like, Jimmy Jimmy Coco Coco Puff, but I was so wrong. And let me tell you why I found out. Yesterday I went to Woodman's Patrick right, and they only play fifties music in there. Oh, so you and I wrong. opened the door. Guess what song was playing? Your song. <laughs> Your song. <laughs> And it's not Jimmy, Jimmy, Coco Puff, Jimmy. It's Chimmy, Chimmy, Coco, K-O-K-O, K -O, Bob. Oh. I couldn't have been more wrong. However, in my own well, defense. the way they say it. It sounds like it. And in my own defense, I think I picked it up. I'm going to blame uh, Tom Hanks for this. Do you know why? why? Because he did a movie called Big. And in that Big, he had a friend named Jimmy in that movie. And the exact words, he sang a song, Jimmy, Jimmy, oh, Coco. Yeah. Remember that? I'm sure, I'm sure his career is going to go down after this. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't think he has anything to worry about. Anyhow, so we're going to, if you guys have an idea for an, a new introduction, um, you know, may, I think I owe Jimmy maybe a little self humiliation. I, know, I always, I, I always like the one with Patrick and I when I looked around the corner of the building. Oh, we could bring one back. Yeah, yeah. We were trying to break into the car. Remember that, Patrick? Can you bring that back, Patrick? Yeah, but Jimmy was like peeping around the corner. Yeah, he was looking. He was on the hunt for some furniture. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we bring that one back? We can have a little laugh with it. I can mess with it, too. We can do with that. All right. Um, so uh, I've been noticing the Facebook. We, we've been getting a lot of Facebook people. A lot of questions about things. Right. And you've been answering, but you've been also... <laughs> Inviting people who you know want to join, you you let them join, right, Jimmy? Because you're yeah, an administrator. Yeah, I, I tell them Kevin. Kevin is not charging this month for, for <laughs> membership. And and remember, that is free, and so is in the YouTube videos. So if you guys want to just get started in the upholstery business with those things, that's fine. But I think people really find the online classes, and Daft has been great, hasn't she, Patrick? With her suggestions yes, sure. on Facebook, and I think she's really enjoying your class, Jimmy. Okay. So um, I'm glad somebody is. Yeah. So she's been a really great help. Um, so uh, yeah, we're over, uh, well over now, seventeen thousand subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Um, and I think that takes care of that business. So I think. Do you have anything to add, Patrick, other than the fact that you already said that the pot phase two of the French settee is up? Yes, which was Jimmy did the edge roll stuff, and he's doing the, the he's doing the burlap in that in, that, in these few classes. I think you have that titled "Now the Real Work Begins" or something like that, right? Something like that. And so, how many other phases are there in this? Well, there's 23 classes total, so I think there's four or five even. Wow. That's a lot. Oh, they have, have to do something with all those 23 classes. Tell Jimmy, me. that's a little delicate set tea. That's a lot of classes for a little delicate I set can't tea. Say, well, I have an offer to change the subject a little bit. Somebody wants to donate or get rid of it, a sofa. A sofa. 
Well, Six, uh, 70 inches, they said. Well, we'll I haven't got it. a picture of it yet, but I want, as soon as I get it, I will definitely call you. And you're going to reupholster it yourself? Well, I mean, I was thinking maybe for next year's pro one of the next year's projects. The problem do. is, what do we do with it? Where do we put it? It has to stay where it is. You can't take that back and forth. Oh, God, no. So it's a little bit of a space is still an issue, you know. With I us. know. That's the, I mean, unless we did it quick. Somehow we did well, it. I don't know what, what we could have a what we call a green beret type uh, approach to it and, and, and do all nighters, three all nighters in a row, maybe to get it done. I mean, whatever you want. I, I mean, this time I will call my sister up and say, where's that place? I want to donate a, uh, a sofa. Let's get rid of it. Right. Oh, speaking of <clears> then yeah, another, there's another, another submission on Facebook. I just sent that to you on your email, Dad. Oh, okay. A, a, a late one. So with Jimmy, um, did you find the person that you wanted to give nope, that chair to? I haven't seen him. Oh, that's sad. Well, that's all right, because I'll call my sister up, and she says that there's people looking for furniture starting out, and I'll donate sure. that. You know. But, you know, Jimmy, if you guys have, have signed up for the online classes, you see how much work this is and how many how long it takes. And Jimmy was going to, you know, find – he promised that chair to that, just to, for you guys who don't know – Jimmy works um, at a major um, hub way uh, transportation uh, service. How's that, Jimmy? You can you can say the MBTA. The MBTA, which I just real I just saw today, they're going to lose thirty million dollars with this new. <laughs> we won't get into the politics, I guess. <laughs> no, we won't. We'll talk about that another time. <laughs> but anyhow, um, it must be hard moving people around, and that's what you do. You yeah. you, you put people in the. You push them in, not like not like the Japanese. I see they 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 put them in like sardines. You ever see oh, that? Oh, I I I couldn't believe how they do it. Oh, and the and the people just accept it. You know, they know that they need if to get they one ever, more. If we ever did that here, they'd be screaming. I know, I know. You the know? Japanese are so nice, aren't they? They don't complain about it. No, but they but you know you go in during rush hour. This is what you're gonna get. But you think that's bad in India? Did you ever see them transporting? Yes, in they're India? on top of trains. Wow! At least they get them inside the train in Japan, Jimmy. Yeah. And, and what mean, do you I, do? Do you get them? You get them inside the train? Yes. Uh, you do you social distance? I do. I've been social distancing since what two years now. That's got to be tough. Did they have to add trains? No, they didn't add trains. So how uh, how does that work? A lot of people have have been uh, you know working from home. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's true. You're not getting the, the ridership, right? No, no, we're slowly getting the ridership back. But. Well, I hope I hope it it's all gonna clear up. I was talking to a fellow business person today. You know, businesses are just closing up faster now than I think even in the beginning of the pandemic. I, I know. Well, I think an awful it's really sad when you have people who have invested money, their own money into a business and I don't care whether it's a, a Well, you're looking at them. Right. You know, I mean we, we <laughs> we've invested a lot in our business. We have a storefront in a community and we're in a mixed use as you know we're in a mixed use uh, part of town but it works i mean it, it, it's, it's great. great uh but i was the only light on for a long time in that on that street i was the only light on in there i mean was i working no but i, I felt it important just to continue a regular schedule because it did the phone just went dead in the beginning of this oh well people i don't think people understood really the right. impact it was having and, because um, I mean, for me, mm -hmm. the, during that time they had the two week shutdown, um, it, you could just see like it was, it was scarce. They actually just shut the whole tea down. No, they didn't. They, they kept it open. They did. That was the only but, thing. But open. it was the number of people coming in. I mean, people on, from the commuter rails, people coming, you know, buses and so on. You could just see you get two or three people on a bus just where you would normally see 15 to 30 people on a bus. But I'm hearing stories now, Jimmy. People are just so weary. Some people are so worn down by this, you know. And so, oh. so I wanted to make a statement, uh, even though I wasn't working on projects. I, that was there's always something to do in an upholstery shop, mm -hmm. cleaning up or or checking old orders to see if you can, like we do occasionally. I bring this box out and look at old orders and things like that. So I felt it important just for my mixed use. This residential area, you know, it's mostly residential, and then there's some commercial with me. I felt it important just to, uh, for some hope. Uh, you know, we have to be, our age group has to be hopeful, right, Jimmy? Yeah. I mean, what else do we look forward to? Kevin? Yeah, so it'll get better. But, I mean, hopefully it will over time. I mean, yeah. it's sad that the, the, the number of businesses and that's any and all businesses, how they've 
change the landscape of going out of business as well yeah. and people yeah. trying to recover from that and you know losing a lot i was sitting with my <laughs> wife at a very famous restaurant here in, in the boston area called legal seafoods I, I i think i can mention it because i don't think they're around anymore oh they, there's a few is there yes but they had a they had an awful time. They had they had a lot of employees. They they had a good product, delivered a great product because of the, they had a lot of employees, and they really had a hard time. They had, they didn't open in what the restaurant we used to go into in, in Cambridge. They didn't open that again. That's still the closed. one in Kendall Square. No, the one the one in Harvard Square. Oh, because I know there was one in Kendall Square, and I don't. Is that still there? I'm not. I haven't been down to Kendall Square area. Doing uh, that Sylvia asked, uh, what is the best foam for chair cushions? I, for chair cushions, I use a medium ultra foam, high density, um, two point, I think it's 2.6 density. And I have great luck with that. I very, I don't deviate from that much. There's a soft foam that you can get, which I don't recommend because it doesn't hold up. And there's a firm foam over that. Oh, there might be two, two, two firmnesses over the medium, but I find that, that they're both too hot. So I think that medium ultra foam I use. So I highly recommend that. So that was my, hey, do you smell burnt toast burning a moment right there, Jimmy? So now I have to get back to work here. We were a little Yeah, warm. somebody reminded you. So when, yeah, I think, I think that's a good thing. <laughs> when Patrick is there, he kind of knows, you know, I don't think, I think he can't really control us uh, where he is, right? <laughs> well, let's get to work. Well, she says, what does that mean exactly? What? About the foam. About the foam. About the foam? What do you mean? Yeah, the way, the way you described it. Like, it probably, it probably means that, you know, how does it feel when you sit on oh, it or now something you, like now, that. Now you're asking me a science question, which I, I, I didn't do very well in science. Jimmy, what does it mean when something has density? Thickness. Thickness. But it's a liquid. So it starts out as a liquid, doesn't it? Yes which is the foam, which they pour into a mold and then, right? Mm -hmm. So I think people get mixed up, I think, because of that, right? Because you have a piece of foam and you're trying to figure out density in a in a hot object, which I think is hard to, for most people to visualize, right? Mm -hmm. But when you look at a, a really good piece of foam, first of all, it's colored. It's either green or blue. Um, the white stuff stay away from that means that it's not flame retardant and the stuff that I have is not does not off gas it's flame retardant but it doesn't off gas it's supposed to be environmentally uh, good uh, production of and and all that that's what they tell me um, so when you look at a piece of foam you'll see a little um, these little sparkles um, they look like I think they're like sand particles or particles that's what gives it the density. So if you didn't have those, you have the white foam pretty much. And white foam has nothing. And you could compare, a lot of times it's just basic, just compare the weight, the weight to, to pick up a piece of white foam and a piece of this ultra foam and put it in your hands and just weigh it and you'll see the difference. It's a huge difference. Now latex, people get to call me all the time. They want They want to use their own filling. I don't do that. They'll say, I want to use memory foam or latex. I don't use either one of those uh, because it doesn't work well with fabric. You know, uh, memory uh, latex and memory foam is great on a mattress, but not on a cushion. You Why know? is that? Just the, the wear and tear? Because, you know, it's it's sitting, sitting the human form is a little different than laying flat out on your back. Okay. So when you're, when you're sitting on a cushion, all your weight practically is on that cushion. Yes. So when you sit in it, the memory foam's even worse. The memory foam doesn't come right back. You ever notice it when you sit on it? It, it crunches. Goes back. But that's really bad. That puts a lot of stress on the fabric. That when it goes down like that, mm -hmm. you can imagine what it does to the seams. So uh, on the fabric that you cushion that you cut. Okay. And then it comes back, but there's a lot of stress that's put on that. The foam. This foam is designed not to do that. Okay. The foam that I use, the ultra foam. It, 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 it relaxes a little bit, but not that much, like the latex. Uh, and while well, latex has other special problems with it that I don't like, I, I still, I, I remember when latex first came out, it was a great product. Well, I actually don't remember. That's going back a little further than that. Frank Lloyd Wright introduced that uh, latex, believe it or not. Really? Yeah. He, he introduced a lot of new materials because his architecture was so different. I bet Michaela knows about Frank Lloyd Wright, Patrick. 
he was revolutionary um, at his time. It was just it, his buildings were so different than any other building. They were, he was like cutting edge and he used a lot of modern materials. And he discovered latex. He used to use latex. But latex breaks down. It, it breaks down not to. It's an organic material. So it gets the heat mm -hmm. and it starts to break down in no time. I'd say in 20 years, you're going to have a, a you know, almost years, though, that, to me, that would be, that's a long time. That's not a long time, really. Polyurethane cushions last longer than that. Really? Yeah. Polyurethane. You mean, think of it. It's an oil-based product. So. Uh, Jonathan from North Carolina says um, there's still a foam, sh foam, still hard to find because yeah. the foam uh, factories are short staffed. Yeah, we have some uh, supply chain issues. Um, edge rolls. Uh, oh, by the way, is Daphne on? Uh, not Daphne, but Diana on here right now, Pastor? No, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Randy's here. Um, Hi, Randy. And he mentioned 2.6 density yep. is density. So the higher, higher the number, the less likely to break down. Yep. And fall apart. He uses and, uh, the same thing I do, the 2.6. Randy's always great uh, to have as kind of like a uh, uh, fact, che fact check fact check, and uh, just, just supporting me, what I'm saying, the information I'm giving a lot of times. So thanks, Randy. So is uh, Diana, um, I owe her some edge roll. That's because I wanted to let her know that I did manage to get a roll, and that should be coming in this week, and I'll let her know if she's if she's listening. Uh, but all uh, for all of you who are looking at this now live, who haven't, uh, who don't know what we're doing here, or, or looking at this after, after it's live, uh, don't forget to check out all the resources that we have for you to make to make it easier for you to upholster. Um, beginners, journeymen, uh, even seasoned upholsters like Randy, I think learns a little bit from me. I probably could learn from him if he had a channel too. Oh, but <laughs> that was a good time with him. But um, we'd like to let you know that we have um, i would start with the free stuff first the youtube and um the facebook form we're, we're going to get to our youtube comments and our facebook comments in a minute but for all you looking don't forget in the very least if you like what you've seen if i've helped you with something we we have a lot of one-offs i call them they, they they reference our bass library to fix something at home we just had our, somebody comment on something that they fixed and then you never hear from them again you know if they could only just subscribe uh, you know, you know, in thanks, you know, we would great that they thank us, but if they subscribe too, that that's a way well, there to, might you know. be, there might be other things down the road that they might want to look at. Do yeah. I don't know. Do you think that's true? I think a lot of people just, you know, I know when I need to fix a, I don't know, a spark plug on my car, like Patrick does a lot of YouTube uh, fixes on his car. Mm -hmm. So do you reference the same channel, Patrick, or are you floating all over YouTube and do you subscribe to the channel that, that helped you? Uh, it's all over, but and they kind of made it tough now because they got rid of the uh, dislikes. I mean, they're, they're still there, but you can you can't see how many there are. So it's just like everybody so likes you, you now. It's almost like soccer when you were well, a kid. Depends, because sometimes <laughs> in, in yeah, now the problem with that is that you don't know if someone's giving you bad advice. That's right. Well, I mean, so the, the, why is that, Patrick? I mean, you know, this part of life. I mean. I thought everybody liked me. My father said, yo, Kevin thinks everybody likes him. But you know, there are people who don't like me. Yeah, there are Kevin people don't like Jimmy even. I've heard them. What? <laughs> You're lying, you bastard. Jimmy, come on now. You can't be liked by everybody. Yes, I can. You can? Is that I your can. goal in life? Yes, yes. That's Yes, at my stage, or yes, I'm going to be liked by everybody. So you find out somebody doesn't like you. So what do you do? Like... Like what's like, wrong with you, man? <laughs> what's not to like? Yeah, there you go. That's the line. <laughs> well, Jimmy, you're in for disappointment if you believe that. That's all I gotta say. Okay, let's get here. Jimmy, are you commenting here on YouTube? No. Never mind. Uh Patrick, we need to get into it into the YouTube. Let me see. Okay, here we are. Got a lot today. So we better get moving, huh? It's enough blabbing around. What's going on here? There we go. Okay. Harmony says um, on the, this is the rare fine how to upholster 1860s antique chair. Do you have a recommendation for what I could use instead of horse hair? It's so expensive. Ours have been filled with hay for the past century. Wow. 
no sign of horse hair. We're watching all your videos and gather the supply list. The horse hair filler is our last step. Thanks for your feedback. Well, so what you have to remember is horse hair comes under the heading of batting. So um, batting, you have soft batting and you have hard batting. So uh, hay and horse hair come under the hard batting. So that would be what you would use for your base. Soft batting is like Daycron and cotton, although some people use cotton for base work. I understand that. Probably wouldn't recommend that. So if you if you have a seat that is this thick, let's say six inches thick and four inches of it was was ha uh, hay, mm -hmm. and you don't want to use horse hair, I think your only option really is, is foam. But if you're, if you're trying to be true to a piece of furniture, like some people don't want to put foam in antiques, and this is what it sounds like they have. So what are your choices, Jimmy? I mean, you could go with um, hog hair is cheaper. Hog hair? Hog hair really? is cheaper. I've never heard of that. Coconut fiber. I hate to bring that up because I know it's a touchy subject with you. It's turned into a touchy subject. You've made it a touchy subject. <laughs> <laughs> and what else? I wouldn't use cotton as a substitute because cotton is a the, soft uh, padding. What about the uh, the stuff that you, you, we used on a couple of the projects here? The, uh... Well, you got rubberized horse hair. So yes. you got a four, let's say you got four inches to make up. Right. So you could make that up. I wouldn't go more than two layers with the rubberized horse hair because that is a tendency over time. To, to you know just kind of settle a little bit so you always have to be worried about that but when you, you if you were to do that you'd have to sew those pieces together. yeah yeah you could do two you know even one inch I would say one inch horse hairs which would bring up it brings you up to a half of the so what else would you put in there you need something you need more hard batting over that if you're trying to make up that gap of four inches mm. so um you know foam it does does fit that bill you know but but again uh, if you're doing an antique and you don't want to use foam so i think you i think you're stuck with cotton unless randy if you have another idea if they don't want to use uh you know they're worried about expense randy so cotton would i just told you i don't know if i'd use cotton but maybe cotton with the horse with the rubberized horse that would be okay well would you That's use a harder form for the seat cushion well they, it's an antique so i'm guessing they don't want to use they really don't want to use foam on an antique. Mm. So if they don't want to use the horse hair, I wouldn't recommend hay again because hay breaks down really fast. I would imagine. And, and so a cheaper, think think <laughs> maybe a cheaper horse hair substitute. The rubberized horse hair certainly is. Yes. But over that, you need, um, you might want to investigate um, horse hair. Or I have another suggestion. You can go and find an antique let's say that's really in tough shape and nobody's ever going to upholster and it has horse hair in it. Mm -hmm. You could Can't clean that out. horse hair, Jimmy, as okay. long as I can't do it professionally. I need to get fresh new horse hair. Okay. But, uh, but if you're, you're working out there alone, it's for yourself. You mm -hmm. can do that. You can clean it. Now, Jimmy, do you want to talk about your, the tragedy that you had with coconut fiber? Oh no, you can tell them. No, no <laughs> you got to be careful when you're washing, but first you have to identify. Well, I was properly. concerned about it because, Using the dry washing, it was fine. It was not a problem. It was the drying part that I was concerned about because it was coconut fiber, and the right. dryers are very, very warm. And I was yeah. concerned about fire. It. I was concerned for fire. Right, but it didn't. Didn't uh, I think the bottom line is you couldn't get it to dry out. I, you know what? It it, it should have been probably spread out on a floor somewhere a long, outside. Some, well, of in the it, sun. Yes. But it was not, I think it was winter time, I think. Well, you had a awful time with that. Yeah, that's why it went the way it did. But anyhow, I think I think look for substitutes uh, for the horse hair or clean your own horse hair. That's a good suggestion, yeah. right, Jimmy? Yeah. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Um, oh, Janine says, it's great to see Jimmy again. I love these questions and answers. Lots of tips. Who's that? That's Janine, your favorite. Mom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I get all warm inside. Oh, well, that's good, Jimmy. <laughs> Steven says on the, the upholstery show, talking about learning upholstery on YouTube, I'm one of those people also learned shoemaker and lost construction and orthopedic fitting via YouTube. Didn't start cold, though. Learned garment sewing pattern designs before the internet was a thing. Well, 
Stephen gave his age away there too, didn't he? <laughs> uh, I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, but yeah, you know what? This still, admittedly, we're doing the best we can online, but there's nothing like in-house, you know, teaching. I do miss that. I mean, we had 12 we had people. Fun. Remember Jimmy? Oh my God. Jimmy was the star of that show. You were. You were well, the diva. I mean, we had well, I went to it because of my work schedule. I had Saturday morning classes. Tell uh, people about those classes, what they were like. They were, uh, a lot of people brought in different uh, projects to be done. Some dining room chairs, some chairs that, uh, you know, uh, a wing back, for example. Uh, some people brought in simple bar stools to be done. And uh, I, th I don't think there was, of course, anybody really um, experienced or had done projects um, on their own yet. I mean, from what, from what I gathered. But it was always, uh, you saw quite the variety of, of fabrics coming in and out. Fabrics, furniture, and people. Yes. I, I think one of the things I loved about the classes is that we had we had all walks of life. We had a doctor, we had a nurse, we had engineers, mm -hmm. and we had people police working at the officer. team, police officer, right? Yeah, and then me. Where else are you going to find a group like that together, all working together, getting along, and just on that level, on the same level? Right. You know, you go to a cocktail party, Jimmy, right? Yeah. And everybody kind of separates into their groups, and that's the end of it, right? Right. But in that class, because we all had a common denominator. It was fun. Right? I mean, Saturday mornings, they brought in the donuts, of muffins. Jimmy, we would bring that in. Other people did, too, didn't they? Yeah. It was, it was yeah. back and forth. We took turns. We had to scotch nice. guard everything before Jimmy came in, though, with this coffee. <laughs> Right, Jimmy? No, my coffee was set aside from everything. I, no, yeah, no, especially when the fabric came out. You had no accidents, huh? I don't think so. I, I don't think either. I'm just teasing. Well, anyhow, let's get back to the YouTube, Jimmy. Maybe we'll ask Jimmy a question to see if he can see if he can answer one of these. You want to take this one, Jimmy? No, no, yeah, we can we can talk about it. one of our most popular ones, and I love this next one because it has to do with history is the 1860s chair. And I, I, I debate, I have a little debate with myself. Is it popular because of Patrick's thumbnail or is it the title or is it the content or all three? Because I think people just like seeing cool, they like you working on cool stuff, unusual stuff, you know? And I think, Pat, you know, another difference too is you put graphics in that. Do you remember we did a little research? We don't have time for a lot of research. No. But no. Patrick did, we did on this one and he found the picture of the guy that made the chair or something. Or, or the boss or something, a boss of the factory where it came from. Do you remember, Patrick? You don't remember? Yeah, that, out in Kansas. In Kansas. And, and I'm pretty the, sure. The history of that factory he had and everything else. So, But this is good. Listen to this. Ian says that that style, that chair, as well as the red fabric, reminds me of the rocker in which Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. I saw it at the Henry Ford Museum. Oh, wow. There was a dark staining around the head area which looks like blood, but apparently it's from the oils that men wore in their hair. Do you right. remember what the name of that oil is? <clears throat> what did your mother call the doilies? It was another name for those. I don't remember what. I know that's why they probably used a lot of those the things on the on the um, the heads. Yeah, on, on the stop with the name, but you know what? I'm embarrassed myself because I can't not now. What was the, what was it's escaped my. It's escaped me. I haven't heard the term in so long. It's been 40 years since I heard it. Maybe somebody there on YouTube well, chat now, line. Now, why why don't you Google it? Find out what it is. It's an oil that the men used to wear in their hair, and the ladies used to make these little doilies to protect the front, the fabric from right. that. Right. You, you have it on the on the arms. Yeah. And also on the back of the head. Yeah. It was the oil, anyhow. Ian says another. Right, a couple of funny. Ones here. Hi from an, uh, Susie says hi from an ex upholsterer. Hi Susie. I'm in Texas now, but my family was from Springfield, Mass. Love oh. hearing your accents. <laughs> Watching you is encouraging me to, to reupholster several 50s, 60s chairs in my garage. Good oh. for you. That was um, Donovan says, it's "Is Jimmy hiding from the law? Get in front of the camera, Jimmy." Yeah, you want to pull over, Jimmy? Because Jimmy seems to be part of this now. He's 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 in it. He's, he's kind of taking over the spotlight a little bit. Let me move the camera no, no, over no, just no. a little slightly. Right right and, the, and ladies, Jimmy got a haircut. And he, yeah. he's, um, uh, here he is. He'll walk over here. He, I he's think he's better six, than everyone because of his new haircut. Foot. He's 270 pounds. 
207. High school equivalency. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> Not this again. We had in trouble last talk week. About, talk about a resume, <laughs> would you please? My God. Wow, well, looks good, Jimmy. Doesn't Thank he? you. He looks okay. Yeah. It's slicked back, too. Look at that. Yeah. He's going for that fifties look, you know that about the same time. So he looks a little. little it's amazing little, what soap and water does. <laughs> <laughs> little Anthony, <laughs> cameraman. Listen, Patrick, this is for you, and I, I, I really. I glad, saw that one, and thank I'm you. Glad you're it. getting some recognition because I, I, I know I, I try to, I try to make sure I give you guys credit. You and Michaela for all the camera work and the editing. It's countless hours, you guys. Ian, most people, if, they, if they're not complaining, they don't they have no idea you did a good job if they're not complaining. But when they complain, you did a bad job, right? Or, or you didn't do a satisfactory job. People, ordinary people can see a bad camera angles and things like yeah, that. Yeah, they That's can say there's something wrong there. But, but <clears throat> Ian picks up on cameraman did a great job. Filming something like this seems easy until one tries it. Wasn't that good, Pat? Yeah, it's still it's not perfect. I think. I think well, I mean, that's better. what gives that's what gives you a professionalism too. You're not you're not going to stop. You're not you're satisfied. That's good, actually. The, be self critical is the best thing you can do. It's helped me in upholstery too. You can because um, you're the one that has to present your product in the end, and it's a reflection on you, right? So Ian also says thanks for that. Okay, let's go to the next one. Oh, we got a lot here, Patrick, on this. Oh, it's a very busy week. Let me know if I missed I still, yeah, I promise I was going to upload a video. I'm sitting on a ton of videos here, but uh, I haven't done it yet, so I'll have to do that quick soon. Very interesting, Jay says, uh, especially about leather, and also this is about the show last week, I think. Also about furniture life in the current time. I learned a lot that will serve me well in buying new furniture. So we were talking, Jimmy, about how... Um, some of the furniture companies got their hand caught in the cookie jar, right? Because when you're talking double rubs on fabric, let's just start with that. Their double rubs are, they're proud. They say, well, this is a double rub of about 2,000 to 5,000, which is extremely low. Mm -hmm. But um, the now, furniture. What's a good, what's a good double anything rub? Anything over 25,000, Jimmy? 20, okay. 25,000. Would you say, Michaela? Hello? Ask Michaela Patrick. Uh-oh. Did we lose them? Are you still there, Pat? Yeah, I'm here. I was just dumping out my coffee. We were... <laughs> oh, well, you know, you, you know, it'd be nice if you, maybe you put a special order in here for us. We are you. wondering what Michaela thinks about double rubs, what, what she recommends for double rubs yeah. on fabric. Michaela, what do you suggest for double rubs? Well, it depends on the job. Can you hear her? A little bit. It depends on the job, but usually I say, um, well, we've been saying anything above 15 just for like a, a general, a general job, but anything that gets more, um, more, a lot more use, I've been saying 30 to at least 50,000. We, we see them as high as 400,000. Can you believe oh that? Oh my God. Wow. Superman, Superman couldn't even rub through that. We don't know. <laughs> So I guess it depends on what what the use is too, and that's that's all those questions you ask somebody. Okay, Jay Jay says um, on how to pad a chair. Great information. You are my go-to upholsterer to learn from. I am not a professional, but have been able to do some professional-looking pieces. Nice. This Send some pictures. Then. Yeah, please go to yeah, the forum. I, love I don't know if Ian's on the forum, Patrick. But a lot. Of, you know what I'm finding, Patrick? A lot of people don't make the connection between the three things that we do. Three things, right? The broad, the Broadway Upholstery Forum on Facebook, the YouTube, and the online classes. I, I think there's a disconnect there somehow. I don't know how. how uh, I want to make sure people know all three are available to them. Well, thank you, Jonathan. He says the perfect show. Oh, thank you, thank you, Jonathan. I really appreciate that. Jimmy's been asking for another raise. Do you think we should give him one? <laughs> He didn't even get the first one. <laughs> Thank you. It's in the mail. Hey, have you decided to become a mediator, Patrick, maybe? <laughs> this particular video is a bit hard to follow compared to your others as the camera pans too fast for me. Uh-oh. Which one is this? 
the uh, this was was this an early one, Patrick? How oh no, I left that in there because they actually say that it's it's compared to the new one. The new ones look good. So okay, he goes in. on. I can tell what's being done. Just those de details, I'd like to be able to see. And there's the there's why we do the online classes, right, Jimmy? Yeah, right, right there. I mean the. You YouTube want, you want to be great. able to see the project from start to finish. We have time because we know people are paying for it, so we put a little bit more effort into it, obviously. Let's face it. YouTube is presented free. We do the best job we can, but there's one camera usually. In the online classes, we have three angles a lot of times. Right, because we're working. Lighting. I mean, think of the, the set to you alone. We had how many, Patrick? Two to three for sometimes for one, one thing we were doing. Right, Pat? Three cameras. What's he doing? Uh, uh, two, usually two. Are we boring you? Are you, you still, are you still boys? <laughs> My God, man, what are you? Are you making the coffee or grinding the coffee beans or what? Jeez, I could see him with toothpicks in his eyes, like know, pulling they, his eyelids open, like in the oh cartoons. Oh my God, that that Midwest lifestyle is just too much for you, Patrick. Well, you're just boring. You know, we are boring. Yeah, you, you we know are. That, right? Well, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty. Uh... <laughs> well, you think you still think everybody likes you? Yes, there you go. <laughs> everybody does. Stop being me. <laughs> I can tell what's being done. Just those details I'd like to be able to see. But thank you. I hope these videos stay up for a long, long time. And I guess they will, oh, Patrick. Forever. Well, you know what? I think those YouTube videos complement the online classes. I think once you start, if you're serious about getting into doing a project or two, I think, of course, watching the videos, is, it gives you an, an inside information on things but watching how they're applied to the projects we've done especially since we've expanded quite a bit um i think it really helps uh, people's yeah, understanding of it i agree yeah. lois says thank you so much she's commenting on the the show last week thank you so much for this video i needed a break from upholstery center this video was quite entertaining um in my in my my heart tells me that you and Jimmy make a good team, but my brain tells me dump them. No, <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> no, she didn't say that. Patrick, you can kill the show. We can, we yeah, can. I, I, I gotta pull the plug. Yeah, uh, yeah. That was a, I took that that quote. I from, knew it was coming. It, you know, <laughs> if it doesn't come at least ten times a show, when does it come? No, you guys. That was a comment that Simon Cowell made. To the most fabulous duo I ever saw. Remember that, uh, Jonathan and and, the, and what's it? What's the girl name? Jonathan. What, Patrick, you know which one I'm talking about. You don't. Like I have no idea. Thing. I don't even. I don't, I don't really she was a pop that, singer. So. He was an unbelievable Pavarotti type voice. He was unbelievable. Oh. The two of them were unbelievable together. Really? Yeah. And at the end of it, he, that's what he said to them. But he said that the kid who had the amazing voice, mm -hmm. she had a good voice, but he had the most amazing voice. He yes. said, no, we came here. We came on here as a duo, and we're going to stay as a duo. Oh, see, that's love. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just right. You know, it was right. They. Well, yeah, of course. Well, I mean, you know. Mary says in the... Um, Ply grip video that we did, which was popular, a, a recent one. Do you always have to have piping around the edge? You don't always have to have piping on uh, ply grip, but it makes it a little bit easier to close like this. Well, is this that is, is the, so when you do that, is it like acts like a guide? Yeah, and it kind of you know what it does, Jimmy. It kind of butts up into the and it kind of it hides it a little bit better if, if you put it on right. You got to be careful putting it on because you could overlap it. But when you don't have the piping, you have to be better at putting a ply grip on. You have okay. to make sure you, you, you probably, for advanced, when you're more advanced, that I would do that. I, would, I wouldn't do it right. I wouldn't, that wouldn't be the first time I use ply grip. The first time you use ply grip, make sure you use it with the piping. Okay. Then to get used to using the ply grip and refer to that, that one we did on, pipe, on, on the ply grip. Any uh, catch up on this, Patrick, on the comments? Uh, are you all set? Oh, there's Daphna. Hey, Daphne, we're just talking about you. Thank you for the posting. We haven't got to the Facebook yet. <laughs> Randy says double Jimmy's current salary, zero times zero. Zero times uh, two equals zero. I'm not, I'm not very good at math, but doesn't that come out to zero, Oh, Jimmy? yeah, you guys in public schools. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, Jimmy went to private school. Never mind. And look where I am now. Your, your parents love you. 
At the upholstery school, he graduated. There you go. <laughs> oh, by the way, Daphne was asking about the certificates, Patrick. We we offer certificates. I, I had it. I had it. I only have had it set up yet on that new because we switched over to the new Learn Dash. I haven't. Uh, I'm trying to send it to her if I can find the files. Yeah. No. I think. I think uh, that's a good thing that you. That was your idea. Yeah, we'll get her the master upholstery certificate because she's our one of our. Uh, well, I think she we subscribes should, we to all the classes. Something like the Southern New Hampshire commercial where we go out to them and. Oh, on the bus. Yeah, on the bus. Well, yeah. for you, I I wouldn't be seen in that uh, thing you call delivery truck. So. <clears throat> Jimmy, weren't you the guy walking down the street and the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, the, the uh, bus, no. they stopped and they asked you for directions and you just gave them directions and let them go? <laughs> I think that's for another subject, Mr. Kennedy. <laughs> All right, never mind. Yeah, I know where your mind was going. <laughs> Obviously, it must be lonely and up in Maine in here, right? This is where we are. You're out there on the hot desert road. No, you could have gotten a ride. People have to really think about what you're saying. It's like, oh god. What do you think of this guy, Patrick? <laughs> I don't know what's going on right now. <laughs> uh, Patrick, someday I'll explain it to you. And uh, you know, there was a scene in a movie that I think Jim Carrey was it, Jim? Carrey? Patrick, all you have to say is, "I smell, I smell toast burning," and that will that will get us back on track. <laughs> all right, Roger says, "Thank you for uh, tutoring on much needed information." How much piping should be charged for single and double? Thank you. We don't, I don't usually, that doesn't factor into the, this is about the pricing show that we did. That usually doesn't factor into a price. What what starts to factor into prices are the decorative nails. And sometimes I'll charge, you know, maybe 15 or 20% more for nails, depending on. Oh, yeah. I mean, they are. Um, and fabric amounts change with certain things too. Like if you have a side chair that had double, uh, that had, nails in it and then you're switching to double piping the fabric will change the okay. fabric amount will change but usually my labor cost on sync between signal and double doesn't it doesn't factor in for me uh mary she says on the um crate and barrel fitted panel on um this brings back bad memories this is one of the <laughs> some of these videos we have not have you ever taken a video down patrick that we've done in 10 years nope not uh, one. That's we were thinking about going through them and taking some of the ones that uh, this one I really struggled with, and even I can struggle with something because of the fabric. I'll blame it on the fabric. <laughs> yes, go ahead. <laughs> not on the day that I was having, but anyhow, it's still up there, and it, it, you know I'm not proud of, but but you know what it shows when you're having trouble, you have to, to kind of dig into your bag of tricks. Remember that cat, Phil, the cat with the, the bag and the cartoons? Remember mm -hmm. that? He had yeah. a little trick bag? Yeah. What was that cat's name? I don't remember. I know that. I, I sound, know you're I sound really hip, don't I? Hey, what yeah. was that cat's name? That the... <laughs> Top Cat? No, it wasn't Top Cat. Oh, I like Top Cat. Top no, was that Top Cat? I okay. think it was Felix. Mm, maybe. Okay. Um, but anyhow, when you're, when you're having trouble and Sometimes it's good to put something down. That that that's what I would do first. But we can't do it when we're filming. Sylvester the cat, huh? Sylvester no, the cat. Sylvester, no, was no. it Sylvester? It wasn't. Yeah, there's a lot of cats, huh? Well, yeah. And it wasn't Pepe Le Pew. Oh no, he was a skunk. Yes. Um, by the way, he's very controversial. But we won't get into that. Yes. Uh, yes. Mary says that people if, are picking on animated characters. That's pretty. <laughs> that says that they're. Level that's all you say, Jimmy, about yes, that. Yes, that's all. I'm going into that. We're going to have issues and answers after. Are there any comments, Patrick, that we should catch up on, or is it just people making fun of us there? I'm just making fun of you. <laughs> I'm glad I have this mute button because every time I shut it off, me and Michaela are laughing, cracking up hysterically. You guys actually find this funny? You guys two generations under us? Oh, my God. Notice I said two, dude. <laughs> True. Uh, yeah, well, maybe not. Maybe for you. Maybe one generation. <laughs> one and a half generations. This yeah. isn't funny for you, is it, Pat? I never thought it was. It's funny because I don't know what the heck you're talking about. <laughs> You don't that know makes any it references. funny. Your father's ramble on about nothing. You imagine another five years where he'll be. <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy. Mary says, if you could ever do this from an overhead view, the part of sewing the deck showing this must have been an old video, Patrick, because you do get an yes. overhead view, right? Because now we have the overhead view. So now, must have now been somebody before said that. it might have been Randy. He said it's some somebody said it's good to see the the history of the channel and how it kind of it, it's, it, it got more sophisticated, um, not 
talking about what's going on right now. It's mm -hmm. nothing, no sophistication here, except the way you, you're sitting. I was going to say, you better clear that one up. <laughs> <laughs> but the channel has, thanks to Patrick only, I mean, I'm the same with Pulse I was 10 years ago. Okay. But it's him that's changed. You know, and he doesn't really, I'm glad he got some recognition here today because, and him and Michaela, because the, the work that goes on that he's done, um, you know, Patrick was kind of nutty about, we were working in, down in an active upholstery shop with all his equipment. Mm -hmm. That was hard, wasn't it, Patrick? Yeah, all the dust the and dust everything and else. And everything in the camera. That camera, so I'm, I don't know how that camera didn't get ruined, but get knocked over down there. I don't know how it didn't happen, but it didn't, thank God, because we have, we have a really good camera. And um, people notice that that Jimmy's current class now is still taking place at the old shop. That's how long ago we filmed that. <laughs> wow. And uh, then we're going to go on to the next one because I'm really, really lagging behind here. Sorry, guys. Daphna, is she on there now? 11 minutes ago. Wow. She's yep, she's on. Sometimes as a way of double checking, I save each part. Now, in this one here, this was uh, Club Chair Three Upholstery. Uh, apprentice work. And Jimmy, I think Jimmy, is that you? Was Jimmy with me on that one or was that somebody else? Was that? Oh, that was the other person that we had. Not... We were, was it somebody else? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes as a way of double checking, I save each part of the chair fabric as I'm stripping it. And this is a good beginner's thing, but she gets to a good point here. You got to remember this. And I mark what it is. I can then compare each section to my initial measurements Often for an overstuffed chair, like a club chair or a wing chair, the fabric overage isn't trimmed because it's hidden under the seat or under the arm. So I know the measurements should be close. I think she's smart here and in having it as a reference only, but not her only reference, right? Well, that's a good guide, though, in, right, in but, like you say. But like I say in this video, I remember <clears> this, <throat> we were talking about how oftentimes fabric is put on and then it's trimmed. So if you're taking patterns that have been trimmed, you're getting the wrong measurement. Well, that's right, but at least she has a ballpark idea of this. Is another tool. I think it's a great idea. I think it's a good idea. Yes, but not a solid reference. Right. So JC says about the how to pad a cane dining room chair, which I think got a lot of responses. Patrick, I have a similar chair that has a cupboard completely. When I took off the foam and padding over, there was a beautiful wood underneath, even some burled. Is there a way to keep this wood showing and still have a nice seat? Well, oftentimes the caning is, uh, there is nice wood um, around oh, yeah. the caning. So what I recommend when when you're changing, which we did on this, when you're changing, people get tired. I had somebody come in, they, they had three times they caned the chair in a relatively short time and the kids we're on it, and they all go through it each time. Oh, well, they're, 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 yeah, they're only as strong. So they had had enough. So I always recommend just put the upholstery where the canning was. Don't don't extend it over. Keep that wood. And you can do that because you have to upholster that flat because they're made from the floor up to be flat with the caning. Mm -hmm. So you can put a flat piece of, you, you know, put like a layer of cotton in there mm -hmm. and, and that's it and then i usually recommend a gimp trim not a double welt because the double welt is actually right rised up you don't want that that will wear right? mm -hmm. so yeah i hope that answers that daphne had a very good comment there didn't she i think that's it on this one so let's go to the facebook what do you got two three facebooks in here patrick yeah and there was one posted um uh, 10 minutes ago, 20 minutes ago. So, I, so can you put that up, Patrick? No, he did I what? You can't do that. You can't put the Facebook up from there, right? No, no, I'll it's hold, there. It, I'll hold it up. So we're not answering on the YouTube any longer. We're so busy. We don't answer them on YouTube, do we, Patrick? No, that's why I hope when people see us not answer, they know, hopefully they know we're going to answer it in this. Yeah. We're not ignoring it. But getting back to the other point I had, sometimes people don't know about this show. So maybe in, a, in the library, they come across the question and answer and reference it from there, but they have no way of knowing which question and answer we've answered this. Do you know what I'm saying? So we should think about that, how we can... How you maybe, can answer on the video? Maybe Jimmy would volunteer. Maybe we can offer him a little bit of a... Oh, God, you guys don't tidbit. offer me. <laughs> I 
that's what they call the debate and switch, isn't that what they call it? He's already an administrator for the Facebook page. Well, maybe we can get him to do the comments on the I, YouTube. Yeah, yeah, people. Would you do that? You, you would be surprised if the people, when I, early morning, I'll see, oh, you know, some somebody wants to be approved for the uh, full stream Broadway, and I'm thinking, and my God, don't. it's five in the morning. Well, don't forget, they could be from Australia or somewhere. No, I, yeah, I said, geez, I said, they're up at Wells. What are they doing? So we got Daphne's commenting on she's she's got um, a gratitude post she calls it a few months ago, I was visiting a local upholsterer not Kevin exclamation point. yes I read that today a customer walked in and wanted to know if the upholsterer could reuse the foam from a brand new cushion that came with her house and that she didn't <clears> want <throat> he offered to line my dumpster with it and she was so disappointed but left it uh, but I said I'll take it. I'm so glad that I know how to make a cushion, thanks to Upholstery on Broadway. She's always given us the plug. Thanks, Daphne. She knows how important it is with small business to get any plug that we can. Uh, online classes. She's specific about that. And was able to reuse everything. I cut down the foam, ripped some seams, and trimmed the fabric. Then redid the boxing on just one side. So I had a couple come in the other day. She had two cushions that she insisted she wanted new foam in it. They were foam cushions. They were only 10 years old. I think most upholsterers said, sure, it's $170 to, to refill a cushion mm. each. And she was going to be willing to do that. And I said, you know, I do this a lot. I said, you know, this is not worth it. It's, it's, it's not going to make much of a difference. The foam that you have is okay. It's polyurethane. I said, you know, think this foam eventually will end up in the Pacific Ocean on one of those plastic piles of, you know, mm. you know what I'm saying? I said, well, you know, I, I encourage people, and actually, upholsters are the best recyclers going anyhow, right? So mm -hmm. you could do it on little things like that, make a big difference if everybody did it, right? It's not all about money, right, guys? Now, the next one, Daphna. Oh, I got to show you this, you guys. Daphna did an amazing job. Did you see the wing chair, Jim? I don't yes, need to I show did. you. So let's show I, you people know what? the wing chair first. How let's, much did you spend on the on? The, I'd love to know how much you got on the fabric. How much it cost? Daphne, Jimmy wants <clears> to know. <throat> he's asking a very personal question for some people. How much you paid for the fabric? Ah, I guess that's not too bad. It's not. It's not like a mask and a route in a day. <laughs> the chair on the bottom is with the before, you guys. Isn't that nice? And there's another. This you know. Here's, he says eight, uh, nineteen dollars a yard. Oh, wow. Wow. That's cheap. Yeah, no kidding. Daphne, I'm glad you showed the outside back. Now, I'm going to show the outside wing. How many people, when they take a picture of their chair, take pictures of the outsides? I'll tell you who. People who just learned how to do the ply grip with the videos and is proud of their work. And I'm going to, I don't think I mentioned this to Daphne, but there's the wing, the outside that wing. That is, I, when I looked at that, I said, oh and my God. There's the is... outside back. Now, what happens a lot of times, even professional custom upholsters, I notice, they drop the ball on the outsides. They think everything, it's very important. The insides and the cushions are very important. But oftentimes, a piece of furniture sits in the middle of a room, right? Yes. And so you want to make sure that you get it looking <laughs> good all around. And there's certain techniques that make the outsides look better. Yeah. Right? I, you know what? I have a project coming up. I, I would love to use that. Jimmy, you're going to use it. Oh, I, I, I have to show my uh, my uh, client. Now, Allison, she says, um, oh, I don't have a picture of that. Oh, yes, I do. Let's show the picture first. This yeah, is, I sent you both. In the yeah, email. I got it. Okay, so explain that. So she says, hi, everyone. I just stripped a bench ottoman and, and have encountered a wooden top. Typically, I simply remove the screws, and that comes off quite easily, as you probably know. In this case, a wooden board has been glued and nailed to place. Oh, big problem. To remove this wooden board, I would need to enlist the help of someone who owns tools that I do not own. The other option is to reupholster it with this board on in place. My plan is to redo this piece for resale, so I will be painting it first. I envision being used <coughs> in extra occasional seating on a small ottoman. You think a professional upholstered look with crowning and some softness can be achieved with the wooden place? I think it can be, and I think I would suggest that you do that. Now, um, the way to get that off for us upholsterers would use a chisel. You should have a chisel in your 
guys know what a chisel looks like and a wooden mallet. Those two, those two tools should lift that wood off, but it's kind of messy. And sometimes the epoxy that they use is really, really good. Good. I was about to say bad. <laughs> I guess bad if you're trying to take it apart. Good if you're just forgetting about it, and it's going to be, it's going to be together with two pieces of wood. But, well, if she were to leave it there, tell tell her how to how to go about that. She she needs to just line up her chisel and just hammer hammer the you, chisel. You still want her to web it. Um, and the, the webbing is always the better way of doing it, but she's, you know, it's a resale item. So she doesn't want, I don't think she's going to want to put too much money into this. And she well, asked if she could still crown it. Yeah, she can crown it. She How many, so it. about two inches? Do you have to do cotton? What it depends you on, you know, in this case here, it sounds like she's making an upholstered seat. So she probably would want to put a one inch piece of foam that she bevels the edges actually. Some people don't know what bevel is. Hold on a second. Let me get a piece of foam. I think I have a piece of foam here. Fill in, while well, Kevin goes down through his massive warehouse in this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, good. Just bring it up here. Come on. So, so much for the special effects. Wait a minute. I have to go downstairs. Yeah, yeah, you look a little dingy. <laughs> I always wanted to do that. Really? Did you take drama in school? He laughed. He's your son. Oh, no. I wasn't the drama kid. Are you kidding me? Oh, thank I was God. shy. Thank God. Yeah, I know. The world couldn't use The world has enough of me with these. And they, they, yeah, the world has one George Clooney. They don't need another. <laughs> oh, thanks, Jimmy. He called me George Clooney, you guys. I think he gave me a compliment. I don't know. So anyway, so this is a piece of one inch foam that I have beveled at the top that I would use. Uh, maybe not necessarily this big. I'm not sure how big this this ottoman is, but you want it smaller than the actual surface area. I'd say about three inches in. Put this in first like this, up like this. You may want to grab some staples on the corners. And then a piece of two inch foam maybe over that, Jimmy. Okay. And then you need the edge roll around the ottoman. And you want to staple your two-inch foam inside the edge roll, not how, 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 how thick is the edge roll? One? Let me get the picture back up. Let me go and hold that up. You can hold it, Jimmy. It's heavy. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, it is high. Must, Patrick, is he is he amusing at dinner time? I could ask you that. Patrick, <laughs> I have no idea. Patrick, it is high density after all. So it's, it's heavy. Can you take him with you the next time you leave? Decide to leave. Yeah, I'll drop him off at the side of the road. Yeah, hey. like exit thirty-seven. Uh, you know. So, just kidding. There's, there it is again, the ottoman. So she needs to put um, a small finger roll, the smallest edge roll we have around mm -hmm. that. Frame it out. Put this piece that Jimmy is holding heavy. If that gets too heavy, Jimmy, let me know. And then two inches of foam go over that. And you guys, if you watch the online classes, you learn the tricks like how to take your two thumbs. Do you remember this, Jimmy? Go ahead, Joe. You did this. Take your thumbs for something that's more than an inch and roll the foam so that when you're stapling, you're only grabbing the top third of the two inches. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because mistake people make is they try to go through all two inches right randy randy knows what i'm talking about don't go through all two inches or all three inches it won't happen it, it it's going to make divots it'll happen yeah the gun will do it it'll perform but it's going to make these huge divots it's going to look like jimmy after an 18 hole golf course he's out there doing the divots because i understand he's not a good golfer at all i think it's handicapped what is your handicap oh well, that's man. a loaded You're question <laughs> But you don't oh want my God, man. <laughs> you don't want divots in upholstery or in the golf course. So when you when you go through the two inches or three inches, it's going to create a divot that you will not be able to overcome with the soft batting. Does that make sense? Okay. And then over that, after you do that, over that you can depending on the fabric. I think I like to take a piece of bonded daycron over that. You might have to fill in where you staple the two inch foam with just the beading of cotton. And then over that, you want to take a piece of bonded daycron. This is good, isn't it, Jimmy? Yes, that's what. That's why I, I asked. See, and this is a good example 
of why the online classes work so well if you can just take the both of us. Now, now in the online classes, we don't goof around. See, he, it was too heavy for him, Jimmy. I don't want OSHA come. I don't want OSHA calling. Why don't you put that aside? I, 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 the, I, you, know, <laughs> you, you can see the bees are sweat. <laughs> hey, he's getting a good workout, isn't he, Patrick? Yeah. <laughs> hey, maybe we should have a gym with upholstery stuff. Like, hey, yeah. Jimmy, go over there and bench press that one-inch foam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, man, we're having fun today. We're gonna but... have a go fund for your mental health situation. <laughs> well, my mental health is fine. You kidding me? Look how happy have... I am. I don't know. I should talk to your wife because I'm sure that she's, <laughs> she's probably shaking her head at night, going, "Thank God he's asleep." <laughs> I wanted to say that on the online classes, we we do have a different approach. We're not as you know goofy, and once in a while, Jimmy, you know, he does go. Mike Patrick, we have to reel him in a little bit more on that. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, he did good in this latest class. I've been we've been editing it. And I haven't noticed anything too crazy. Tell me so. about it. What, have you uh, you know are you at the point now where you're putting the happy face over him, or, or are you keeping his face? Yeah, one class has to be muted out completely because there's so many uh, inappropriate things. So, you know? <laughs> I keep telling them time and time again not to do that. All it is is jazz music the whole way through. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Was, I said he, it, was good. Was, it was good. It was it was a lot of funny stuff in it too, but it's a lot of good stuff. So. I apologize for all you people who are hearing me snort while I laugh for the first time, but. I'm from a long line of snorters in my family. That's how we laugh, so it's not my fault. I inherited that snort. Hopefully your son hasn't. No, Patrick, I've never heard you snort. No, thank God. <laughs> I, I think Michaela would be appalled. You're out in a yeah. restaurant, you hear that? You think there's a walrus in the restaurant? Yes, that might be the deal breaker, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Sarah, this is the last post, and then I want to get to Jimmy doing um, a measuring. This, is, just to let you know, Jimmy, I just posted that, so be careful. It's not you a, did? It's, yeah, it's not a strip down. Uh, you never know it. But I think what I want you to do is met. <laughs> <laughs> you hear what he just said? Oh, uh, all right. I guess he can get his digs in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. Thanks, good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so Sarah says. Um, first time posting, but a long time lover of the YouTube channel, of your YouTube channel. Anyone have recommendations on the best way to clean horse hair? <laughs> I think we went through that, but tell her. I mean, <laughs> uh, clean horse hair. Um, I'm redoing an Empire couch for a friend after his cats had done some damage. So, Jimmy, do you want to answer that question? Because you're the expert. Well, on yeah, well the, the one time I did the uh, horse hair. I believe it was the second project I did. Your own horse hair, right? Uh, yes, it was the own, the, I don't know, the horse hair was a good 60, 70 years old, I was <laughs> told. But I uh, I was told to wash it in a bag, a uh, pillowcase actually, and uh, then to uh, dry thoroughly and actually dry it outside, which I did at the time because of the time of the year it was. And uh, it was clean. It was good to go. I mean, that was one of the things you don't, you definitely don't like, you know, just throw it into the washing so machine. It definitely is a pillowcase type of. And make sure uh, the primer. pillowcase is closed. Yes, don't just very tightly it done. You know, because if it's undone, it's a mess. If it, if it, oh, if it then you are definitely having a problem. That's why I used to go to a laundromat. There was a big sign that said, no horse blankets allowed. Really? Yeah, because the horse is on the blanket. Yeah, I mean that was that was just quite the stress on those machines. You know, I'm not sure you could probably do it today. And you know, they can't put cement in those machines either. <laughs> Are you trying to be funny? Is this your comedy hour? Well, nobody gets it. No, Patrick, nobody gets it. You know, Jonathan says online comedy class. Exactly. <laughs> now we're gonna That's get what we don't want to turn into <laughs> Patrick. Are there any other comments before we get going on the series? We're going to try to demonstrate what the online, why the online classes are a little different. Well, Randy says put it in a pillowcase, tie tight, wash it at a laundromat, then dry in a dryer. There you go. Yes, just gotta be careful with the temperature. And um, so, if there's no more, Patrick, right? No more comments. Yeah, we're caught up. Okay, so now we're gonna 
put on our serious face, right, Jimmy? Yes, well, you are. So let's let's do what we did last week. Let's pretend like this is going to be a post. I just had a little bit of rain. Well, we yeah. want to make sure we get straight on, though, because we always start our classes uh, okay. with a camera well, explain, like this. Well, right? explain. All right, you go through the motions. And so I'll... we're trying to get people to buy the classes. <laughs> so if you're new and you haven't bought an online class and you want to check it out, you can start with yeah, one should, class. We should at autograph time. them. Uh, well, I was like, that ship has sailed. <laughs> What's that again? <laughs> He's like, we're trying to get people to buy the classes. After seeing this, I'm not so sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It's like, uh, no, I think I'll move on to, to glass blowing, maybe, or uh, uh, crochet. Hey, hey, you know, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah. I'm just getting a piece of paper for you. I have to go downstairs again. God almighty, man. <laughs> you take the pen right there at the desk. Right there. Yeah, right that there, pen right there, doesn't right? work. Oh, my God. Also, Dad, I want to remind you, too, Michaela has some submissions as well. Oh, so, I forgot uh, about so. that. Let's get this started. Now, we're going to we're gonna present this like we do the online classes, but this is going to be a really fast, yes. fast class. So the first class. Explain quickly. Class number one, right, Patrick? So welcome to this online lesson, class. Lesson, lesson, lesson. This online class is a modern furniture, we're going to call it, a piece of modern furniture, but not mid-century, Jimmy. Uh -huh. It's an example of a lot of furniture that's produced today that um, they're trying to do. This is designers. I won't mention the two designers that did this chair. But what they, what they tried to do in their company was to make it look a little different. And what that means for us sometimes is that it's going to be a little challenging, which this one's going to be, right? Uh -huh. So I, I'll show you. I want to just go over it a little bit, a little preview. So one of the things here is that this this doesn't tuck into a post. This is this is just a seam. Do you see that, Julie? Yeah, that's de that's definitely a catchy style. It's just a seam. Style. And and this here is kind of almost magical how this how this rolls over the arm. There's a way of doing that too. It's a little different. Um, <clears throat> I, I just just to tell you now, there's what we call a stretcher underneath here. So it's a seam, and you sew another piece of fabric onto the seam, and that gets pulled through. Oh. So the, the thing there, what they're trying to achieve is to keep not have it indented like most furniture is. Okay. So that's what makes it a little different. The other thing that was different about this is the outsides are a little different. They're a little, little, little different shape, you know. So that's another, another time they just... They want to try to fancy it up a little bit. To, and why do they want to do that? So that you buy their furniture? Well, yeah. I mean, it, it does. I like this uh, style right here, yeah. the, way, the way it is. So what I want you to do, Jimmy, so this is class number one. We're going to do class number one, what we usually do, you guys, is he strips the furniture down and gets it upholstery ready. But this piece was just done, so he's not going to do that. But what Jimmy's going to do right now, he's going to label... Um, do, do you want to try to do the whole thing on your own, labeling and everything? Or? No, you want to show. Let me to... label. I'll, I'll tell you what to, on the left-hand column. You a pen that works? Well, now you, you guys want guys everything. budget cuts? <laughs> My God, you're, in, you're next door to a CVS for crying out loud. Hey, let me find it. Hey, wait a minute. I got one right here. My God, man. Right. Jimmy, you got a pen. I'm not sure oh, if that one works. Yeah, oh, my God. Well, it looks like it does. How's that? Well, so far, this is not a good demonstration of what the online class right, is. Yeah, okay. But Preparation <laughs> is everything. Don't you say so that? Let's say Jimmy has stripped this that down, that. but yeah. not reupholstered. This is only a reupholstery, meaning it's a very new manufactured piece. So it's so it's not going to be down to the frame like some of the other projects that you had. Right? I think that's about every project you have. Right. Had. This one would be uh, would be nice because it's just a reupholstery, meaning mm -hmm. you take the old fabric off and put the new fabric on. Okay. So class one, usually you guys would be him doing that and get it upholstery ready. That would be class one. Class two would be measuring. So Jimmy's going to measure now. Let's pretend this is class two. So Jimmy, I want you to on the left-hand column, a left-hand column, right? Um, you want to space it maybe every other space. Start up here and write seat. You can write it down. <clears throat> you want me to do this? Part? Yeah, you do the part okay. and I'll measure. How's that? Seat, deck, inside arm, arms, because you need two of them, inside wings, because you need two of them, inside back, outside arms, because you need two of them, outside wings, because you need two of them, and outside back. And then what I usually do is we usually, on the online classes, on the sewing parts, like the cushion for this, we wait. We don't do that right away. We, we save that 
towards the end of the class. So, but we do reference that it needs a cushion. Just want to make sure we're careful cutting it. So pretty much it's handwritten out like this. It'll be Jimmy's copy that he keeps throughout the class to reference it. And he's going to get two measurements for each section. And then he, he knows, right, Jimmy, three inches overall, yes. more, right? You remember that. So we're going to see, we're going to test Jimmy to see how close he is. Yes. I'm going to do one more thing. I'm just going to go like this. I'm going to put a slash up here. And I'm just going to, I'll show this to you guys in a minute. So I, it's very simple. Keep this as simple as possible, you guys. You have a slash mark that represents up and down, another slash mark that represents horizontal side to side. And it's as you're looking at each section of the chair, you're looking here now. Now, the seat changes, and this is important to know, from top to bottom. And you want to mark the top of the fabric when you mark it. And anything up like this has a top. Mm -hmm. Anything that's down, like the deck, has a front. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you have to really make sure you get those terminologies correct. So Jimmy's going to fill all these measurements in, and I'm going to check, and I'm going to check that. Okay? Yeah. Here you go, Jimmy. Good luck. I'm going to step away while you guys watch Jimmy. How you doing, Jimmy? I'm working it. We're just trying to provide some visuals for people so they don't fall asleep. You definitely, you know, throw them a few drinks or something. Patrick, are you still there? <laughs> yep. This is one of those times where the overhead would have been nice. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to provide people with a little uh, this is the book that we 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 have that's available online right patrick this is available on the uh um as an electronic file yep and uh randy just mentioned a good great reference book and thank you for getting it randy i hope it's helping you i'm gonna leave this up for a little while so people see it's just the basics you guys i mean i um i know that it's not um production wise what I would normally do, like for instance, I do five springs instead of, you know, I, the, the ottoman could have taken more than five, but five is an easier way to learn. Um, and it, it just gives you more satisfaction. I, I, I think people need to be introduced to upholstery in a softer way, not the way I was introduced, which I, I, I don't even want to tell you how some of the dysfunction, but that's normal in, in the case of uh, a real apprenticeship sometimes street level street level apprenticeship um sometimes it's hard to stick in there with those things but i did and i'm glad i did but um so so a lot of what i did on this ottoman was designed to make it a little easier for people and you know you develop your skill it takes time to develop a skill 
some people when they're teaching you don't ex don't really understand that because they forget how hard it was to learn a trade. So um, it takes a little softer touch, I think, is better. And I think this this demonstrates it. I think Randy, you you know what I'm talking about with this um, ottoman um, and and how to develop a uh, skill over time. The actual knowledge base, would you agree, is not that much. Um, it's not it's not like you're studying to run a nuclear power plant, <laughs> but um, it's the skill building that that's the journeyman is where you build your skill, and that's that takes time. Jimmy's. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Jimmy now to see because he's getting exasperated. Why are you, you exasperated? You wrote this quick, and it's it's not the way I would do it, but that's okay. Okay, are you questioning me now? Jimmy? Yes, I am. We don't do this in the online class, right? Of course we do. What, measure? <laughs> we have to show everything, man. Come on. I'm going to leave you alone for a little longer. Patrick, are there any comments? Um, Jonathan says, being trained to read grid coordinates on a map, the first numbers were horizontal and the second set of grid co coordinates were vertical. My first numbers are always left to right. Oh, well, that's interesting. I you know, it's funny. Randy does the same thing. It's funny. I, I sometimes just, for some reason, I switch it. I'm not always consistent that way. Isn't that funny? I suppose. Funny if, what? Ha ha. <laughs> I suppose um, if you had a railroaded fabric, it would make a difference how you how you lay it out, right? But you know, we all learn differently, I guess. What do you got the outside back left to me? Yeah, I'm doing that now. So you, you wrote a, this so quick, I'm like, what is he uh, you know? In a class with 12 people and they're all doing this, I'll have everybody do that. And then I'll come back. I'll take my tape measure. Most people don't pick up on this because because what? Um your expertise is that what you want to say? What I'll do is I'll do this. Jimmy, what's the seat up and down? What'd you get on the seat up and down? Oh, I didn't even finish that. That's the last thing I'm doing. All right, get out. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Are you well, that's are that's you, how I are learned. You, are you doing those cheat drugs again? No, that's how I learned. What, were they, they actually kick you out? Well, I mean, you know, go sit down. Go in the corner. Well, I mean, you gotta be, you gotta show someone. I mean, my God, man. I know, right? I'm I mean, I, I believe in practice and theory. By the way, we're totally off here. Uh, the whole idea. I know that they, uh, something in that Coke. The whole idea is to show people the serious side towards, right, Patrick? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice well, try. If you want to see the good shot. classes? Sign up. <laughs> And if you want the goofy stuff, the question and the answer. All right, let's go. You're gonna, Are you ready, Jimmy? Yeah, we'll okay. do it. So I wanted to make a point. Well, no, you're going to show everybody how to do this and that this is. So this is a little trick to teaching. Yes. All right, you got 12 people. They're new. You know, the hardest thing to do for somebody that's new, whether they're a customer or a student, mm -hmm. is the threshold. Okay, I, I learned this a long time ago. That threshold that people cross, they're coming into your space. Mm -hmm. They, they want to feel safe. They want to feel welcoming. And they, they want to be understanding. Exactly. So the way I teach this portion, which I think I teach throughout on the online classes, and I, I when I taught 12 people at a time, like you know that that situation. So this is what I do. It's a little right. tool. So, Jimmy, what did you get for the seat up and down? The seat? I, I get uh, 12. So it's just, you just want to add another inch, 13, okay? okay. And if you don't want to, if you can write down here, that would be great. 13. You see how I, I, I didn't chastise him for being wrong, but I, and, and then I want to show why that is, Jimmy. I'm at the seam back here. I was at the seam, which you, it's hard to see, and I went to here, and then I added three inches to that measurement to come up with my measurement. Okay. Sometimes, if it didn't make a difference, I'd let them keep it because there's a little bit of leeway here. Okay. okay, so that now I wouldn't be saying this to you when there's 11 other people. That's another thing that people teachers make a mistake at embarrassing students in front of other students. Never ever do that. Ever do that. You might have somebody that doesn't come back because of that. Oh, yeah, 
that's never happened to me, I don't think. I don't think I've ever made somebody feel that uncomfortable in the class. I hope no, I, I mean, everybody, you have to realize, too, that everybody's project is different. This is exactly. a different chair. And they're different personalities, too. Yes. Okay, so, Jimmy, what did you get side to side on the, on the seat? That one I did not. I was just about to finish up. Well, I'm going to give it to you, okay? okay. So, and that happens, too, you guys. So you want to make sure that the, 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 the seat comes out to here. You have to kind of, because this has not been stripped, because, like I said, I've already upholstered this. So it's 33 plus 3. What's that? 36. 36. Okay, so he's got his seat. Did you do the deck yet? Yeah. What did you get for the deck front to back? Uh, that was 30. Excellent. What did you get? So he was a little bit off on that. He, he had a little bit more. But his first day in class, I'm trying to give you a little confidence, build a little confidence, okay. right? Side to side? 33. Exactly. Good job. A lot of people don't get it right. You got it right. Both of them were wrong. <laughs> Had to kill the lights. <laughs> What's the next one? So, so this is another thing. Engage a student, but you have to do this quickly because there's 11 people waiting. So engage the student. What do you got next? That was, that was a hot part for you. I got to say I that <laughs> because we were all at different. Even right. after the first class, even after the first hour, everybody was jumping ahead. Oh, my fabric. Uh, what right. do we do next? Uh, what right. Are we do? right. And. I was, right. Yeah, I mean, it took me a class and I have to strip down my project. Right. And I, I didn't stop. All it's the challenging. Time. It's a challenging class. Yes. Because I'm not up there just lecturing on how to upholster that. Nobody would come to that. <laughs> I think that would be a hard subject to really kind of absorb. Exactly. So, Jimmy, what, what, so this is another thing. I know that you're inside out of the next, right? Right. But I would ask the student, what's the next on your, on your list? Inside arms? Inside arms. What did you get up and down? 18. Okay, Jimmy. Now you have to imagine that you have to go into the wood there that's there, right? Okay. So 18 is the actual measurement, but add three to that, you'll be fine. Okay. And was that your, are you sure that was your up and down? Do you mind if I look? Yeah, I will. So I always do this. Make sure that, especially with new students, that they make sure that they have their directions going in the right direction. Yes, because I'm that's going, really important. Yes, you notice that this fabric's put on horizontal. That's the customer's request. It's another thing that you have to remember. When you're cutting it out. Okay, so what did you get side to side on the inside arms, Jimmy? So you, so another engage, engage, engage the student. What did you get, Jim? I put it as 28. So 28 is the actual measurement. Why don't you add three to that, too? Okay. What's your next one? What's your next labeling or your next um, piece? Outside back, outside arm. Are you sure it's not the inside wing? Can I see? I, I mean, I, I put it down as something. Inside wing, IW. I'm sorry, it's my handwriting. So, yes. IW, what did you get up and down? That one I didn't get. Okay, I'm going to give it to you. That's 30 inches. Okay. And this happens in the class. People sometimes leave blanks and everything. To just to speed things up, you would have to do this. Not on the online class. I'm talking about the in-person class. Well, I mean, we can, you know what, I think. The online we class, we... I make sure that you get them all before I do this. Right. So. But I think it, when you have a different project every time, you need to know how do I measure this versus right. uh, so the, a channel back chair. The pace, versus, though, on the online classes, because there's only one student, mm -hmm. uh, it's, I'm not only is Patrick more focused because of his three camera angles, but I'm more focused. Yes. I have to be focused. I'm not all, I'm not, I, so, so I'm doing this, and I know there are 11 people waiting for me. Mm hmm. So I'm, I'm kind of giving a demonstration of that. I right. I got off track a little bit. So what did you get side to side on this? Uh, that one I didn't do. So that one there, I got 12 plus 3 is 15. Okay. And so the next one, you did the inside back, right? Mm hmm What did you get up and down on the inside back? Inside back was uh, 34. Perfect. What did you get side to side? That was, a, that like, now tell me how, I was measuring from here well, other. this is a separate piece. Oh, it is a separate piece. That's an inside wing, we'll call it. Okay, because I didn't know whether yeah. I should be measuring it as one. And so this this is exactly why the online classes work so well. And people like them because because of that. Because of what Jimmy just he's he he he's he's bringing up a subject that I would have just kind of brushed over, right? But, but so important for a beginner or even a journeyman. Well, I mean, I would have probably you know being the 
beginning person, but then you kind of say, well, is it this or inside back? You don't even need three inches for that because it's the same. Okay. So you go 21 and that just gives a cut, you know, an, an uh, inch and a half or so. I don't go half inches. I shouldn't say that two inches. It's two inches more than what you need. And then this gets a, this gets another piece of fabric after it's sewn, but I don't usually get into that on the online classes right away on the sewing issues because the sewing issues are just so different and you have to kind of, you don't want to give somebody too much or you too much information when you're watching the online class. So they're broken down. I think they're broken down really well. Do you, do you feel that, Jim? I do, yeah. I mean, I think we haven't gotten so far ahead in the class that you end up missing the lesson of missing missing a point. Right. Especially with, you know, the settee, I think, is one of the hardest ones we've done. Yeah. That was like... A lot I, of I steps. Oh my steps. God! I it was like, "What are you doing?" I had and no idea what you were doing, and I'm thinking, "Like, does he?" A know? lot of problem solving too. Yes, that was the so big thing. The problem solving is one of the biggest things in upholstery. If you like to problem solve, um, get into upholstery. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it, it up will challenge time. you. What's because, your next category there, Jimmy? Uh, we have outside, outside arms. Outside um twenty six. Now this is where usually people. Outsides are measured, they're easy to measure. So the reason I do outsides last is to give that new person some confidence because usually they get most of these right. Okay. So Jimmy, show me how you got the 26 though. Well. It's up and down, the 26 up and down. Oh. Well, that's I was the counting, up and down measurement. I was counting this. Well, okay. See, there's a seam right here. Let's, let's turn it to the camera. So Jimmy, you get a seam right here. Right, so you only need to measure from that to there. Oh, what do you got there? So seventeen plus three. I got oh, seventeen. You, you already included the three. Right. Yep. Okay. What'd you get side to side? That was reference your paper. Thirty-three. So I'd still be doing this, right? Yeah. So Jimmy, that's perfect. Okay. Perfect. So um, at that point, I think. It's a bright spot in that new person. So they, they, they've entered the threshold. If he was new, and and they're getting the confidence because they're getting the easier measurements last, and you're building the confidence. But not only that, mm -hmm. that's the online class. But in the in-person class, yes, there's 11 people listening to this. Well, some of them may be able to apply to the. Well, the first class is important to get people to bond with one another so that they help one another, just like the Facebook forum does. But we had that. I mean, in every class. We had it. We had. We had how did we classes. have it? Are you doing this? How did I couldn't get this? I had. I remember having the woman next to me. She was having a hard time getting the staples out, getting started this particular and day. And you helped them. I, you know. The camaraderie. It, yes. This is how I do right. it. This is how you. And, you know, everybody's technique and style is a little bit different. But nonetheless, you, you're. Isn't it wonderful? Classes. Isn't it great? I thought we had some great classes. We did. I, I, I wish it. I could do it again. So once you measure the outside wing, this is the outside wing now. Well, let me measure. Listen, Randy says it makes a good point. Notice that in the online classes, Jimmy, make sure you explain the why as well as the how. Yeah. Thank you, Randy. Thank you. So this is nine. So we had three. 12. So now on this one here, Jimmy, it's always the furthest point. So you might want to go all the way down here ah. because it slants this way. But see, how come? Well, I'll say that after this. Because this is not square. It's round. So where would yeah. you... Well, so, you, this is a clue because the seam here, you go okay. to that seam and the furthest point here is, is 10 plus 3, right? Oh, okay, so 13. Okay. And so up and down, you go here and then to here and then you add 3. All right, 13 to 13. All right. Very rarely do you have a square measurement like that in upholstery. Yes. If you get square think measurements, one. Yeah. it usually means that it's, a, it's not a very well-built chair. Does that make sense? Why would that be? Because... Because manufactured furniture is like a, they cut a box out and then they just pad it. Okay. And they can't do curves. So that's what makes this one a little different from being a new piece of furniture. There's a lot of curves on this. And that's why the designers, uh, it was a very popular brand name in the Boston area. Everybody went there to buy it. And it's not a bad piece of furniture. How old is it? It's only like 15, 20 years old. Oh, wow. So it's, it's starting to come to me now as reupholstery pieces, which is always good, right, guys? So side to side, what do you got, Jimmy? And you got all your measurements on the same. 28. Very good. And up and down? 25. 20, let's see, make it 26. So that would be it. You know, that would be the goal for that for that class is just to get these measurements. We don't have everything. We don't have our piping. We don't have our cushion. 
We don't have anything of a sewn piece, but we know that we need those. So when Jimmy goes to the third class would be cutting the fabric. Fourth yes. class. Now, how many, how do you know? I mean, you being the pro that you are, Let's turn this you would turn around, you could probably say six or seven yards. That's way too much for this. Jimmy. Oh, it is? Say, okay. I would say six yards tops on this one, because Sophia has a loose cushion. People aren't seeing the loose cushion, but there is a loose cushion to this. And could you do it in five? Probably. You'd be tight. I five. would rather, I think I would, you know. Being... So that's another thing I do in the first class. We go over how much yardage you need, because a lot of people don't have their yardage. They don't have their fabric yet. So we tell them about that, What, why you should get this amount of money, and amount of fabric. And then maybe there might be, and you always tell them, there might be a little left over. Remember, it's either... I'd rather have leftovers. Than most that. people feel that way. Or we're expert, and I turn you into an expert on how to cut the fabric. Yes. So that's what people forget. You know, you hand somebody, Randy had the question, you hand somebody extra fabric, and the first thing they do is you overcharge me. No, I'm a professional upholsterer, and I know how to cut fabric. That's what you hired me for. And sometimes it goes the other way. Mm -hmm. And sometimes on a piece of furniture, right, Randy? You could be an inch or two either way of not having enough fabric, or having too much fabric. That's what it comes down to. So a way to overcome the extra, maybe make a throw pillow or something for somebody just to right. raise them. As to match it up. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So Jimmy, so this class, let me just review what this class would look like if we were to do this in our online class. So the, the third class would be sewing the deck in the seat and, and then applying the set, the deck in the seat. That probably would be another class. So that's four, right, Patrick? Five would be the inside arm. Six would be the six and seven, sewing and applying the inside wings and the inside back, which are all one piece. Mm -hmm. Eight would be the outside arms. Nine would be the outside back mm -hmm. and the piping on the bottom. Mm -hmm. 10 would be cutting the cushion. Okay. And then 11 might be sewing the cushion, or maybe that would be one class. So this is a this is a reupholstery. This would be at least 10 classes. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. So, Patrick, are there any other comments we should ca catch up on? Or? I think that's it. You're going to do the uh, submissions? Oh, yeah, the submissions. Jimmy, you can sit with me. You don't have to run really? away. You want, really? Uh, unless you have to go somewhere. I, I oh, yeah. You phone were kicking my ass out to do it 10 minutes ago. Harris phone ringing all the time. We have to talk to him about that, Patrick. The phone ringing. There's <laughs> a couple of things after he leaves that we, we must discuss. Uh, I think he's sit taken, him down. I think he's taking a little of the limelight away from me. And I don't like that. That haircut yes. that he got. I haven't you. seen my mail, my fan mail, so I I think you should give out my 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 email address. And we had a whole board full of Jimmy Sid. Give out your social security number to him. Might as well. <laughs> it was like it was like the North Pole with all the bags of mail oh, he was getting from yeah, the fans yeah, over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's go, Michaela. How are you, Michaela? See, Michaela doesn't get a word in it. I know. She said she's like, you know what? No. She's, like, she's watching us make fools of us. <laughs> I saw a, a Facebook post with this. This um, I like these pictures of Native Americans they have. They're beautiful pictures of warriors, you know. Okay. And there was a Native American. He's on a cliff, and he's all he's looking. He says, it's better to be silent than to open your mouth and look like a fool or something like that. Yes, yes. You know, Jimmy, how I mean. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Anyhow, Michaela, are you there or did you fall asleep? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. All right, let me get into this. I know people like this, so. <clears throat> okay, so you want to do the first one is David um, or Helen? Yeah. David? Yeah. He says, are you able to reupholster and stuff these Flex foam sofas with integral footrests. The covers are attached with Velcro. I don't like doing them, you guys. Um, so um, I can do them, but I find that um, they don't go together like they were manufactured a lot of times, especially those round arms. You see those round arms? This is a very, very, very hard, difficult piece to do. So we're going to charge appropriately, right, Michaela? Yeah. So they both, two sofas with two arms like that with the with the footrest and everything. Oh, man. that You know how much labor there's in here. It's unbelievable. So we're going to say $3,100 each for labor. People at home are going, wow, that's a lot of money. But 
these new, I think, are very expensive. Maybe people can Google it and find out. And plus, they need 18 yards each. Okay? Yeah. So what's the next one? All right. The next one is going to be Elena. Okay, let's get the picture up. These pretty basic. I want you to read the description though to make sure that we we understand each other. Could you read what she says? Those look like slip seats, but yeah, she just says uh, reupholster six dining room chairs in stain resistant fabric. She doesn't say what how old they are or what condition they're in. So I'm gonna say 125 each. And she needs Again, we don't know how many. How many does she say she had? Six. She does say six, which is good because then we could tell her three yards of fabric. Most people are very amazed at how little fabric they need for dining room chairs, but you get two out of a width. So this is a good example of a little ethics integrity in that most people would be willing to accept a yard a piece on these chairs. That's six yards. That's double the amount of fabric. I wouldn't do that to anybody. Uh, even three yards, when you think about it, um, front to back on these is probably, I have no way of knowing, but let's say on the high end, they're 25, 26, 27. Well, that's only a three-quarter of a yard. So if you go three-quarter of a yard times three, because you get two out of a width, um, that's one and a half, that's two and a quarter. So a two and a quarter piece of fabric could upholster all six of these chests. But, you know, three yards is not... <laughs> Another three quarters of a yard to give yourself a little bit of pattern placement and things like that isn't asking for a lot. But a lot of people, they go to other upholsters. So that other upholsterer told me there was an upholsterer, I won't tell you who it was, big, a big store, big, big, big um, place. They were doing sometimes double the fabric. On, it, it was just unbelievable. They were, that's how they were making their money. Um, so, you know, I would never do that. Uh, next one. All right, the next one is a couple below that. Um, Constantina. I have, I have Jen, Eve. And then the oh, next Constantina one's with the K. Okay, that's why I couldn't yeah. see it right away. That's a nice name, isn't it? Do you guys, Randy, do you think it's appropriate? Sometimes I just can't help myself. I do have a big mouth sometimes, but. I want to be kind. Sometimes I'll say to somebody, oh, that's a nice name. Do you think that's appropriate? And and uh, do you think that's appropriate? Yeah, I think it's as simple and, and move on. Yeah, but I mean, in a, in, a, in a sales relationship, I'll tell you who's a really good salesperson. It's Michaela because she doesn't do any of that, that baloney. And a lot of people might think that's baloney, right? But I really think when I look at this name, what do you think, Michaela? That's a nice name, isn't it? Yeah. Have you ever heard it or seen it spelt that way? Um, I have heard uh, something like this, uh, but it's um, it was it was from it was uh, from a a male, and he was Greek. Okay. Um, Daphne says that. Oh, look at that. Da so Daphne, that's, oh, okay. that's a referral from Daphne, and uh, she said she is Greek. <laughs> what is yeah, it? So so oh, it's a it, referral it, it, from her. It was a slightly different name. This one, Daphna, right? Yeah, and Daphna did say that this person is Greek. Oh, okay. So that makes sense. <clears throat> yeah, 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 you're right. But look at that sofa. Look at that. It's huge. What does she say she has in her description? What is what is that? Is it a sofa? Is it a sectional? Does she say? Because I only got that but, one picture. Oh, no, I got said, Sorry, I got it. I got it. I got it. Sorry. I see the whole thing now, you guys. That's a huge job. So first thing I see, the danger sign that comes up for me is that she has buttons in the seats. I would. So we're going to say right off the bat, I'd love to do this. We strongly advise no buttons in the seat. As I can't believe that there's not one button that has popped out of that yet. It's just a nightmare doing anything with the seat button. It looks like she's hardly ever used it or it's, it's newer or something, and it's a vinyl. So there's two things you need to tell her. It looks like a vinyl, right, Michaela? 
Um, Maybe not. Huh. Maybe Daphne knows. Is it a vinyl? Yeah, it does. Oh, it does look like a, a like a faux leather or a. She, says, she wants it redone in fabric. Yeah. Daphne thank, says. Thank goodness. Okay. Daphne, why didn't you take this job? <laughs> do you realize how much? At this point, I'm sure she could do it. She could honest. do it, but I'm talking about the pure labor that's in this. It's just unbelievable. Um, so. We would recommend, highly recommend that she not do the buttons and the seat cushions. Love to do it for her. the cost of the labor. You guys ready for the drum roll here? Because this is you know, this is just huge. It would be forty two hundred dollars, forty two hundred, and she would need um, fabric wise. Um, Pat, do you have your calculator out, Patrick? Michaela has one. Michaela, divide eighty into forty-two hundred. Just, I'm just wondering what that is. What does that come out to? This is just for you guys for. Uh, um, Fifty-two point five. So those are how many hours I think this is going to take from start to finish. And that's where I get the forty-two from because I'm about eighty dollars an hour, and I need to probably go up a little bit because things are getting more expensive. Um, everything's getting more expensive. So that doesn't give much if I'm over budget on this, you guys, if I'm over the 52.5 hours and it's that close, you'd be surprised how good I am at these measurements. So I'm all these estimates. So I'm hoping that I'm helping you guys with your bottom line. Okay. But that's a very competitive hour that it's going to take me and price um, because you know people do you know go to other upholsters to to check out their pricing wow that's ridiculous randy i can't believe that well, a one-year-old sofa he said all the buttons that don't already come out of a one-year-old sofa yeah it's not a good idea see this is a night this is where manufacturers they forget they 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 don't really they should come to custom upholsters to ask them about certain things and that's one of them there was a sofa called the Chesterfield that you guys might know, be familiar with, but it had tufting, beautiful leather sofas with tufting on the seat and the back and the arms. The whole thing about that is tufting everywhere, you know, tufting everywhere you sit. But those buttons, even the high end, you pay twelve thousand or to twenty thousand dollars for this sofa, the buttons pop. I got to tell you, customers do not like paying a lot of money for a cut, for a button that pops. They don't do that. And of course, if you have a button that pops, check out our YouTube channel because we show you how to fix it. But you'll be constantly fixing those. But anyhow, getting back to this yardage, um, she needs. Um, I'm going to break this down a little bit. Um, she has a sh pretty much a chaise and a long sofa, so I'm going to say 20, and I'm going to say on that one there at least 12, uh, 14, 34. 35 yards of fabric she needs in addition to that. That is a complicated, that is a complicated estimate. And you may want to let her know, I'm a little worried about reusing the seat cushions after they've been, after they've had buttons in them, some foam does not come back. So there's a way we, we can steam it and bring the button take those divots here we go about divots again jimmy i love it divots in the foam sometimes we can steam them out right randy but i'm looking to this looks fairly new to me although i don't know i'm looking um that i'm thinking that this is fairly new and i don't have to replace too much i know the back cushions seem okay so what i'm trying to do here is i do want the job so i don't want to say cushioning is extra cushioning Sometimes cushioning, extra cushioning can can ruin a job. You know, they don't, they will, they'll walk. I'm going to try to, you can say this is this, remember this labor cost, this labor estimate is based on reusing the filling. Okay. Yep. All right. We're done with that one. Yeah. You realize Thank you, Daphna, for that. That's a really good referral. Even if I don't get it, I appreciate it. What's the next one? Um, the other ones have already been answered. Okay. There was one, go back to the top. Um, I want to read this one from Eve Cole. Patrick, you missed this one because it was an email. She's talking about yeah, the, what? Uh, yeah, I think I, did I send it to you. No, I'm just, I just found it in my, my emails. Can I read this oh, okay. to you guys? 
because I, I think this is a really good, I'm really um, flattered by this one. She says, Mr. Kennedy. Mr. Kennedy. Jr. Oh, this is a serious mistake. We got to <laughs> correct her on that. I only just <laughs> yesterday discovered your wonderful online videos. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am a beginner upholsterer in Kansas where that chair, that 1860s chair was from, Patrick. Yeah, a lot of upholsterers in Kansas. Yeah. Currently attempting to reupholster an antique I picked up at an estate sale. I turned to the internet when I frustrated that my two-inch foam pad wasn't working. I found your webbing the exact chair. I am now binging your videos, realizing that I had things all wrong and I need a good supply of cotton batting. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe we did read this, Patrick. Patrick, I think I read the, Did I read this? I don't think you've any. If it's an email, I don't think you did. Okay, so she goes. I don't on think you've any emails. Today. I had things all wrong, and I need a good supply of cotton batting, horse hair, and the right tools. If I'm going to do my chair right, I will be visiting your store for my supplies, which is upholstery on Broadway. Remember, you guys. dot com, right, Patrick? Yeah. I will be visiting. Your... <laughs> <laughs> shameless, shameless plugs, Jimmy. Yeah. Speaking I... of plugs, I like what they did. <laughs> You're the last one to talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mr. I can see the top of my head. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> this is hey, we're we're almost two hours in this, Patrick. I know. It's All right, I one. will be visiting your store for my supplies, and I appreciate any other resources you could suggest. I don't think there are any. I handpicked all those supplies, really, you guys, for you as a beginner and advanced. Um, I've already made my mistakes on other supplies. So I think the store that's at Upholstery on Broadway is providing you the best focused supplies that I can think of. Again, thank you. And I'm a big fan, Eve. Eve. Thank you, Eve. Well, I think we better close out, Patrick, because I think this is the longest yeah, question. Yeah, I answer. think somebody, somebody who lives, oh, uh, somebody like to Half that was on. filled with jokes. What's, <laughs> well, I think that we need to offer a free defibrillator for all of our students who who may find this too exciting, Jimmy, this 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 with you back on the stage. Oh yeah, yeah, back on the stage. <laughs> it's another Hollywood moment. <laughs> the oh, stage, Jimmy. Uh, a little little uh, plug for Jimmy uh, on his cameo appearance in the in the movie <laughs> The Town, with starring starring Ben Affleck and and who else? Uh, That's only been mentioned a million times. There was, was, was a good cast. So, J Jimmy co starred in that movie. Co starred, my. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> anyhow, we'll see you guys later. We had a lot of fun today. I hope you guys did too. So, we'll see yep. you later. See everyone next week. Thanks, guys. I didn't realize it was 5 30. I'm like, oh my well, God. We're still live, Jimmy. We are. Well, somebody can ramble on, right? <laughs>